Emperor's Children are probably one of my favorite color schemes in the Horus Heresy, but I've always struggled with getting the perfect purple to future radiance that you see in the Forge Black books. That is, at least, until I was helped out by the amazing Raptor Imperialis on Instagram, who recommended that I check out Lake Purple by Dale and Roni. In this tutorial, I will show you how I took this tip and applied some of my own touches to fit my preferred paint style to get this result, which I think matches the Emperor's Children artwork perfectly. Like the majority of my Space Marine color schemes, the purple armor of this Emperor's Shield Marine starts with a white pre-highlight of media calm air opaque white over a black undercoat. As I'll be using inks directly over this white base coat, I make sure that the majority of the model is covered with at least one layer of this white, and I build up increasingly brighter whites by applying more layers to the area I want the most highlighted. This results in most of the model being some form of gray to bright white. If I left a large chunk of the model black, the transparent inks I'll be using in the next steps wouldn't really show up and be left with extremely dark shadows. For the longest time, I had trouble finding the perfect purple for Emperor's Children. That is, until Raptor Imperialis on Instagram turned me on to Purple Lake from Dalar and Roni. This is a fuchsia purple ink that I think captures the Emperor's Children color perfectly and provides an extremely rich and vibrant base. This ink is applied undiluted straight from the bottle in tooth and layers over the entire model. I wanted to push the fuchsia highlights on this model a bit further so I re-highlighted all of the topmost areas of the armor, first with opaque white from Calm Air again, and then with a watered down fuchsia from Scale 75. Next up, I use a thinned down Scale 75 Intense Violet to push the shadows of the model deeper, as well as to tone down the Miami synth vibe I have going on. There was really no specific rhyme or reason to how I applied this violet ink mixture, and sometimes I focused on just making the shadows deeper, and other times I decided that the entire model was too bright, so I covered the whole thing in a thinned down layer of ink. So with this step, you really just need to experiment with whatever looks best for you, and stop when you're happy. I finish up the armor by applying a layer of thinned down gloss varnish to prepare this model for the oil step coming up next. I decided to go with an oil wash made up of a mix of black and purple oil paint for this model, as I wanted to also use this step to add some additional contrast to the armor plates, and I figured that some purple would look better than pure black for this. I applied this oil wash far more carefully than I normally do, as I wanted to do two very specific things with it, and I did not want to stain the armor darker than it already was. The first application of this wash is as a panel liner, where I just lightly touched my brush up against the edge of an armor plate and let capillary action do its work. This is also one reason why I always frame my models with gloss varnish before doing an oil wash, as the glossy surface it provides allows the wash to spread out into the nooks and crannies of the model more easily. The other thing I wanted to do with this oil paint was to use it as an actual paint to increase contrast on the armor. To do so, I simply painted on the thinned oil paint where I wanted it to go and gently feathered the edges into the surrounding areas. One of the amazing things with oil paints is that you can go back hours after they appear dry and reactivate them with a little bit of mineral spirit. I use this to my advantage here as I was able to touch up my blends after the paint had appeared dry a couple hours later. I then use a makeup remover sponge to gently rub away any oil paint that might have gone where I did not want it to go. Finally. I seal the model once more with gloss varnish to lock in the oil paints and ensure they don't rub off accidentally later on. The decals for this model are pretty straightforward, and I just put a couple on each shoulder pad, hit them with a Microsol, and then spray the entire model with AK Interactive matte varnish to seal in the decals as well as kill in the gloss from the previous varnish steps. I didn't want to go too crazy with weathering for this marine, as I really enjoy the coloration I got, and didn't want to cover it up with too many scratches and chips. Also, I feel like the Emperor's Children would keep their armor pretty clean, so battle-worn appearance probably isn't appropriate for them. So all in all, I really just ended up doing a little bit of sponge chipping of Scale 75 Heavy Metal on the very edges of the armor, as well as some slight stippling of Heavy Metal as well on a few more places on the armor, such as the vent on the top of the head, that wanted to have just a little bit of scratched appearance to them. The shoulder pad rims are first painted with decayed metal from Scale 75. 
This is probably one of my favorite metal colors of all time, as it just goes on so smoothly and has a rich color. I did a layer on top of this Dwarven Gold, also by Scale 75. The straps are across the chest, and the ribbing behind the knees were first painted with Abyssal Blue, and then highlighted with Anthracite Gray. By using Abyssal Blue as the base color here instead of black, I find that I get a slightly rubbery look while it still reads as black, which I really like. I also used these same colors to paint the bolter casing, but went one step further and sponged on a little bit of heavy metal. I figured that bolters in the Heresy are seen more of tools of war than Holy Relic, and they'd be beat up at least as much as the armor. For the last part of the model, I painted the eye lenses flat black and then highlighted the lower half of them with scale 75 Arati green. To finish them off and give them the appearance of reflective glass, I put a small dot of white in the top and bottom corner of each eye lens. I decided to put this marine on an urban rebel base as I envisioned him on the war-torn battlefields of something like Istvan 3 or Terra. I also had a little bit of dry weathering powder around the lower legs to tie the model to the base better, and I also feel the yellow of the weathering powder I used really contrasts nicely with the purple of the armor. All that's left now is to paint the rim black, and the model's finished. And with that, the model's done. If you like the scheme, please leave a comment below, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Thanks for watching, and hobby on.